Okay, here we go. We're at uh, the S60-147 cam exercise where we're going to program the flat pattern for this part. If we're doing anything, we need to flatten this pattern out. I'm going to use the sheet metal tool. So I'm going to right click, go to tabs. And I'm going to add the sheet metal tab, which occurs over here on the left. Gives us all our sheet metal options. And I'm going to use the, we're going to use the unfold command. We're going to select on this tab here. And we're going to collect all the bends to unfold. And we're going to escape, accept. Okay, and it unfolds our model. And this is the mode that we want to be in when we're doing the cam portion. So make sure you save it. You notice the orientation of the part is all wonky compared to what we want. So we're going to rotate the component so that it's somewhat in the same orientation as we would see it on the machine itself. Okay, there we go. Alright, so now we're going to go all the way to the right on those tabs. And we're going to go to the cam tab here. So it's cam manager. Don't confuse it with these other two that look similar. We have the S60-147 operation highlighted. And we're going to select job. Okay, we select job and it should highlight around the model. We want to be in milling mode. Our comment is going to be that this is the S60-147. We're using the unloaded, unfolded version of the model. Not sure why we're getting some lines shooting off in here, but uh, perhaps I have sketches shown. Okay, we're going to use a relative size box. Um, our orientation of our Origins all messed up. So let's go down to orientation. We're going to go Z axis and uh, X axis references. We're going to take the top of the part and we're going to use as a reference for Z. So the blue should be sticking straight up and down. Then we're going to do a reference for X, which would be any of these edges that run horizontal. And so now the orientation looks good. We're going to go to stock box point and we're going to go to the bottom corner. And I think it's number three would be our top left. Okay, we're going to scoot back up and we're doing a relative size box, but we're going to add stock to the uh, sides and top bottom. So on the sides, we're going to add one inch. And then on the top and bottom, we're going to add zero. So our stock is an inch bigger all the way around, uh, but it's not any thicker than the stock that we, the model is modeled at. So this yellow represents the stock volume. We're going to accept that job. And when we highlight the job, it'll show us where the origin and the stock boundaries are. Okay, within that job, we need a couple of routines. We're going to cut the interior features first, and then we're going to come back and cut the exterior features. Okay, so we're going to go 2D milling, 2D contour, and we're going to select from the library, which you should have made in another other um, part, is we're going to cut, cut take this uh, water jet laser tip. We're going to select it. We're going to keep all the feeds and speeds at default. We're going to go to geometry and we're going to select the bottom of each of these interior features. including the box in the center. 
We are going to leave the hole separate like we did before because it's a relatively small hole. We're going to need to use different settings on it. Okay, we're going to leave all the rest of these at default. We're going to go to heights. We're going to leave all those at default. Okay, so we're cutting down to the contour. Uh, we're going to go to offset, should be in computer. The only box we're going to change in here is smoothing we're going to select. So we are doing some curvature on this. And then our last tab, we're going to set our lead-ins. So we're going to have a lead-in radius of 0 0.03 and a lead-in of 0 0.03. And it's going to be perpendicular, and we're going to get rid of the vertical radius. It's going to be zero. And lead out should be the same as the lead in. We're going to hit accept. And it looks like we've got a problem. We've got these two cutting on the inside and these two cutting on the outside. So we're going to right click on this and edit. We go back to geometry. And I reverse the direction of these two. We need to reverse the side of the line it was cutting on. So now we have our cutter path well within. Okay, let's move on to the next routine, which is going to be to cut this little tiny hole. So we're going to go to 2D milling, 2D contour. And we're going to select just the hole. And we're going to go to our last settings and we're going to set the lead in um, curvature to zero. And then our actual lead in is going to be uh, 0.02. Let's see if that works. Okay, it's cutting on the wrong side of my contour. So we're going to go to Edit, Geometry, and we're going to reverse the direction. We'll accept that. Now it's cutting on the correct side of the part. So to keep an eye out on that. What I'm noticing is there's not a visual cue. Um, and at least Fusion it has an arrow that shows you which sides it's cutting on. But you just have to... Um, show the part and if you don't see the contour on the correct side you need to reverse that particular those particular contours all right we're going to do something we did before we're going to take the settings for the first operation because most of them are set and we're going to say duplicate and so that turn that into contour three but we want to move it in sequence to occur at last and right now it still has the geometry selected for uh, the original we're going to edit this we're going to use this to cut the outside perimeter so if we delete all the selections it'll leave us with the outside uh, with with a new selection
And keep tracing around the part. And keep selecting around. Oh, didn't want that face. Should link around the outside perimeter the entire part. Okay, so your blue perimeter should go all the way around. And then we're going to go to our heights and we're going to leave all those at default. And we're going to move on to our offset, should be uh, in computer. We're not leaving any stock to leave. We do want the smoothing selected. And we go to the last and we'll leave all those at default. We'll hit OK. And hopefully we have a contour on the outside of the part. Let's say it starts over in this corner, going all the way around. I'm going to be looking for where it may go in the wrong direction. That looks pretty good. All right, now let's zoom out. Have it centered like so. Highlight the entire job. And we're going to simulate it to see if it's what we think it is. So simulate with stock simulation. We've got our cutter here. And I'm going to slow it down just a touch. And we're going to hit play. So we're cutting out our first window. And it's traveling over to cut one of the lug holes. And it's traveling over to cut the second lug hole. QA slot. Okay, then we're coming and cut the LED hole. Now it's going to come around and cut the outside perimeter. Now let's zoom on in on this and see if it looks like it's cutting on the correct side of the line, which it does.
There you go. And your verification should look like that. We're going to hit accept. We're going to hit OK. Now the last step is you're going to post process. Okay, you're going to, again, you're going to use the HSM works posts. We're going to do Fanuc. Um, we're going to default that to a drive where you know where it is. So in my case, it's uh, my documents, but that should be on your H drive. 0147, because that's the part number. Post to 147. And this is your file. Okay, so you're going to upload this NC file right here is the 0147.nc. You're going to upload that in the Canvas assignment. All right, thanks a lot, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.